you have to have something that you know you want to say to be associated with. So thought leadership comes from having thoughts that are leadership worthy. If you feel like you have those, then you need to put them out there. And, you know, there was, after I did my TED talk, I was thinking about putting together like a little, a little animation from the very, very first talk that I gave, the first sort of public talk that I gave to a little tiny chapter of the American Marketing Association back in 1995. And how that then led to that, then to that, then to that, then to that. And I did my TED talk in 2019. It was launched in 2020. So figure at that point, it's 25 years. 25 years of speaking at anywhere and anything. And some people get a TED talk right out of the gate. You know, they come up with something amazing and, you know, they're 28 and they do a TED talk. But that wasn't the case for me. I was in my late 50s. I had started speaking in my 30s and I started speaking at, you know, little rinky dink organizations that would have me. And that's, that's the way I started. I started writing for rinky dink little blogs and then bigger blogs and then bigger, you know, and it took, it's taken, I'm 60. So I started to sort of put my work out there when I was in my thirties, cause that's really how long it took till I had anything that was even mildly worthy of putting out there. And so I would say, make a long-term plan of what you want, but also don't be very, don't be too hard on yourself with where you expect to be in a year or two years. Part of what I think really helped me grow my reputation was my podcast. But I started my podcast 17 years ago when nobody was doing podcasts. Mm-hmm. So I would, I would suggest, and, and this is what I have my, my students do as well, embark upon a self-generated project it could be a magazine, it could be a daily musing, it could be a newsletter of sorts, it could be a podcast, anything that is directed by you, that's fully your voice, that isn't um, in any way corrupted by a decision maker other than yourself and put it out there and do it on a regular basis, do it weekly or monthly or determine what that schedule is and then adhere to it. And that will over time provide or create a groundswell where if the, if the content that you're making is, is reaching people, you know, emotionally, then they'll keep wanting more. So that's, that's really what I would recommend. The, the hard thing about doing this is that it's hard. (laughs) It's really hard. You have to be consistent as well. Yeah, I mean, I recommend that before anybody put anything out, any kind of self-generated anything, that they tr- they do 10 versions of it. So if it's a podcast, do 10 before you publish the first one. Mm-hmm. Over the 10, you'll begin to see a little bit more about what you want to do, what you want to say, um, and you'll have a bank of, of a, a little bit of a body of work that then you put out there. If you're going to write something, write 10 posts, then put them up on Medium one at a time over the next 20 weeks. That's half a year. That gives you a chance to then promote it, to send it out to people, to do some social media around it. And so you have all of the material first, and then you plan your marketing plan in the same way you would for any other um, thing that you were launching for one of your clients. 